what a remarkable film. I mean, I'm so glad I have a big TV and I was able to like screen share because the, the cinematography, amazing, breathtaking. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now we understand why with Diaz, what likes to get up on those mountains. Ah, yeah. I mean, it's it's once you experience that, all you can do is go back, you know, and do it over and over again. <laughs> yes, definitely. And hey, I mean, how much did you enjoy of it? Um, you, do you mean with making the film, or how much? Photography and uh, pretty much because you did the editing, you know, produced it, you know, directed. Yeah. Yeah. It's heavily involved in this um yeah no it's been a, it's been a real joy and a, a lot of the cinematography honestly credit goes to Matias. uh his gopros get some of the most amazing shots and then um luckily we had a lot of friends we called in to film stuff in the alps and i got to go on a few uh jumps in the states with him and like you know it all it all added up to just some fantastic footage that you really can't see anywhere else uh which has been a joy now in this film um did you get involved in the editing mainly because there was a lot of stuff that you got from Adias during the dives? Um, you know, you had the up air, there was a helicopter involved. Um, can you share the whole process and putting everything together? Yeah, happily. Um, so in documentary format, you know, a lot of times it's not written until after it's been shot, um, unlike, you know, narrative works where we write what happens. So editing is really where the story is told. And so the basic process was we just captured everything we could. So every jump we tried to get multiple angles of, lots of interviews, um, stuff with his family and home life. And then as his life kind of unfolded and the story started to emerge in the edit bay is where I really tried to bring that forth. So we had almost 400 hours of raw footage and I watched all of it multiple times and kind of narrowed it down to roughly the best 80 minutes worth to really get to the heart of the story. And my background is in post-production. You know, I've, I've been an editor for a very long time. And when you're directing a documentary, a lot of it really is in the edit bay. So I kind of leaned into my strengths with that and the ability to kind of combine, combine those roles. And this is your feature length directorial debut, right? You've done several shorts. That's right, yes. I've, I've directed a lot of shorts and edited even more than that. Um, I used to work for a documentary firm as an editor, so so I've definitely worked on a lot of big projects, but as director, this is my feature debut, which is very exciting for me. Yes, congratulations. Thanks. Um, Matthias, question, where do you get the high? Is it the moment you're reaching that point where you're gonna jump? Is it the point where you're flying? Uh, I mean, the, the free falling or when you, pull on that. I mean, I don't tell me, please. Where's the high? Uh, it's not really high, honestly. I get a total sense. It's like flying yoga. I get like ultimate relaxation and serenity when I'm in the air. I almost get the, the fear, I think, is peaking before. Uh, the fear is never gone, really. But as you, you know, check your gear and you go in the process, you kind of just getting in, 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 in execution mode, you know, so you're not necessarily feeling about how you feel. But yeah, the exit is always as you go off, so, you know, but sometimes your, your heart doesn't even go in your throat. You just feel so right. And these are the great jumps where everything is so dialed and you're so, so ready and prepared that it goes flawlessly and you just tap into that ultimate uh, feeling of serenity, you know, but then I love the moment when I land and I turn around, and I see where I came from. That's when I probably have the most excitement, which is why I'm probably always screaming on landing because I'm like, oh my God, you know, because it's just, this is when it just comes, you know, you, you realize it as well. And when it's really, really hits you and, but it's almost, if there is, I guess the high almost comes into the, the, the introspective process that happens after, you know, while you, when you redigest the, 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 the adventure, the emotions and, and you put it all together and it's, and it's something that never really leaves you. And that's why, that's why I love this because it's, it's, that's why it's truly enriching and, and why I keep doing it. <laughs> I mean, you've been doing it forever. Um, it seems like the air is like your second home. Like <laughs> Thanks to Chase. <laughs> um, let's, let's talk a little bit back. I mean, from based on the documentary, you started with silver skiing since you were 18 months. Um, 
And, but you continued on, it kind of was like a scapegoat, right? When it comes to um, really focusing and skiing um, from growing up. I think kind of, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, I had kind of like a, a, um, a uh, difficult, I think, family environment, you know, and, and so, of course, you know, when you, when you have difficulties, you also lean back towards what, what is more fulfilling or what makes you happy or what feels right, right, but it's also skiing just felt like this, this, it's not just a sport of skiing, I think, it's because it's a sport that takes place in the mountains, it has always been such a, a defining uh, environment for my life, and that, um, you know, no matter what, it's always what I look forward to going back to, you know, it, it became really uh, a why to live, you know, that's part of the, the, the ethos. It's that's finding that environment in, in which you don't really find it. It's just, it's thrown at you and you just notice that it's, that's it. That's, that's the, that's the apogee. That's the, uh, that's the highest, uh, I mean that that's that's the environment in which I feel that I'm I'm, I'm experiencing the 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 best highest state of, of myself. So, and Chase, um, and the document I read somewhere that you mentioned that you felt like there was something of Matias and wanting to share story, not so much the the person, the pro skier, the base jumper, but the the person, the persona. What was it about him? That's tricky. And, and even trying to think back to, you know, when we started this, who we were and who we are today, but right away from, from the first time we met and I saw the footage of his first ski base jump off Mount Hood, I knew there was something different about Matthias that, you know, he was doing something that 99.9% .9 of the world would never even consider. And so I knew there was something different about him to begin with. And that intrigued me, you know, like, is he wired differently than I am? Like, how is he able to do these things when vast majority of us aren't? So that it was more of a curiosity at the beginning. Right. And then as I got to know him and understand his past and, you know, who he is as a person other than just the jumper, that's when I really started to understand, like, there's, there's a lot more to this, this person than just the jumps. There's a philosophy to it. He's trying to understand it. Even his dad actually says in the movie, he's trying to find the meaning of life. And these jumps for him are a path to exploring that, you know, and we all have kind of our own paths of, of exploring identity and his is a unique one. And I think that's really what, what drew me to his story and his story evolved as he became a father and husband and, you know, adding on these other elements of, of identity and how those can harmonize or, or sometimes conflict with each other is it just added more and more interest to me and the story just kept evolving. Now, Matias, you mentioned, in a, and I'm going to quote, you said, can't let fear stand in the way from your dreams. Yes. <laughs> what was that one initial dream when you first started? When I first started, uh, well, for me, it was, <laughs> it's, you know, growing up skiing in the Alps and, and, and witnessing or, or hearing about some of what those, those legends and, 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 and pioneers were doing in the mountains, you know, paragliding from the top of Everest or skiing down the steepest stuff you could think of or ski base jumping. And for me, I think at, a, at an early age, it's that their ethos and the acceptance of risk was so strong that for me, uh, not a gender thing, but for me, it, it, it established a, uh, a definition of manhood in a way, you know, as a little boy, you're like, okay, what is a man like, you know, as a little girl, like, what is a woman like, you know, and so for me, that just became like the definition of a, of a true, accomplished, powerful uh, adult, and, 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 and for me, that was... That was that was the the goal was to um, to be able to to reach their level of, of mastery and wisdom, you know. And and obviously, as you do dangerous things, obviously there's taste, you know. I've always been attracted to air and jumping of things, you know. I jumped off my first high dive when I was six years old with a thirty foot high dive, and right there, I was like, oh my god, that's it, that's amazing, you know. That's that's it, that's the fourth dimension, you know. And uh, it just there's obviously taste is going to determine which direction and which path you're going to take in life. But for me, it was really, a, it's really a materialization of, of intentional living. It's, it's doing things with intention. And I think I don't, yeah, I don't really, even if, you know, we take some detours a little bit here and there, but I think in the end, it's, it's, um, it's always aiming in the similar, in the same direction. And I think these, these, these early pioneers and mountain people really left such a big mark on me that they became this 
I don't want to say God because I'm not a religious person, but I would say, I guess, the, this example and this, this, uh, yeah, these, these, these monuments that were inevitable for me. Maybe I think this is question more for Chase. Um, you can answer. Uh, you got a lot of footage from Matthias. So when it comes to you filming, being involved, being more hands-on and the presence of all these jumps, where did it begin? Were you there when uh, the first time he tried, Matthias tries to jump out in the, on the Alps? Was it uh, the second attempt? Uh, good question. So I, I, in the Europe, on the European side, I mean, I shot some B-roll over there, but the actual jumps themselves, I did not get to film any of Matias's jumps personally. Uh, instead, we used local crews um, and called in friends and uh, Matias's cameras for those. Um, I filmed a lot of the family stuff and the interviews and the stuff at home. A lot of that is is from me, and that's again because that's kind of where a lot of my interest was, and in, is bringing those elements. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't get to film the jumps in Europe. I did film a few jumps here in the states, and that was eye opening for me. It was it was a great experience um, to see it firsthand. is a totally different experience, even though I think the movie does a good job of showing it. Mm -hmm. It's different in person. It, it's it's more frightening in person, honestly, because most people will watch this movie and know that he survived, right? But when you're there in person you don't know if he's going to survive, right? You never know. And Matias never knows if it's, he plans as much as he can, but there's always that little tiny what if, right? Um, and so it, it is, I, I actually don't like watching him jump in person. It's a little much for me, um, but I love the footage when it comes back and I know he's safe. Mm -hmm. You never told me that. I'm really touched, Chase. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird. It's really strange. I mean, it doesn't, I can handle it, but at the same time, until you hear that, whoop, there's there's that just half a second of concern, and I'm sure. Yeah, most there's people... that. Yeah, when I go in the mountains, even yeah, guides or friends that help me with the jump, it's and they can't when they're on on top of the line, they can't see you fall or your parachute open, and they just waiting for a sign. And sometimes it's five seconds, sometimes it's ten seconds. They don't know until they see a parachute flying in the distance, and then they're like, you know, and it's and that's that's the part I think that. You know, I'm the one jumping and I'm the one taking all these these risks. But I think what is nice to put into perspective for, especially for the audience, is that when you film things like that, it is a team effort. We all in this together. Even if I'm the one jumping, well, your friend holding the camera could potentially see something dramatic, and he's just as involved in the action as you are as the jumper. You know, and that's and it's beautiful. That's also why it creates so many strong connections, um, friendship um you know respect love i mean everything and it's it's for people that are on the jump site or around like your family it's we're all interconnected with this invisible bond you know of 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 stress and anxiety <laughs> <laughs> yes. i mean i'm with with chase when you said that you know you're kind of like you don't you'd rather not see it but get the footage i mean you probably get a sense of what Matias' wife feels every time. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, obviously I have a different relationship with him than she does, but at the same time, you know, anybody you care about, you want to be safe. Uh, and so I totally empathize, empathize with her. Um, obviously, you know, it's, it'd be tricky. It, you know, it's, it's something she has to worry about every time as do all his friends and family. Um, and yet we know he's cautious, we know he's safe, we know he puts in the work to ensure as much safety as possible. I'll admit, and this is probably gonna sound really embarrassing and dumb, but I'll, I'll confess, while watching the documentary and for the big jumps, I was holding my breath. Although it's like, I'm forgetting like, duh, I'm interviewing him. Like he makes, <laughs> it's like you get so absorbed in watching and these, these jumps, it's just, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Thank you. I think it's, it's- so yeah, it's, you guys it's that's the, the, the power of these, you know, GoPros and all this stuff. It's that it, it, we can make filming in a way that is so immersive that uh, hopefully we can take you along for the ride. So if you felt it this way, then mission accomplished. Thank you. Yeah. It's actually one of the, the challenges in editing was like, he's successful so many times. We have to remind the audience that every time is dangerous and people kind of become numb when you show like a bunch of successes in a row. And then you realize like, oh no, you know, the Matterhorn didn't quite go right or he had a cliff strike, you know, like there's always risk there and people sometimes forget that. And, and then, so that's kind of part of the challenge is making sure the audience remembers like 
it could always go wrong. Thankfully it hasn't and it won't, right? We're going to keep it that right. way, but mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it was eye-opening when there was a scene where uh, it shows that you're just flying in the air, like kind of floating. What was it? 4,000 feet on yeah, 4,000 feet. Yeah. I, I floated for about four minutes in conscious, just in and out of the clouds. And yeah, it was kind of like an ear thing, but our, my buddy that was filming from the helicopter was like, well, we, we didn't know if you were dead. You know, we, we, we thought you were dead because I hit the cliff four times, you know, and then turned away and flew away. And he was like, well, let's see where the body lands, you know, we got to go see. And then, but it's in this moment where maybe all is lost. It, it was very interesting because the, my, my friend filming from the helicopter, you know, confided that it was, there was actually something really beautiful while it was really eerie because he was just floating in, in and out of the clouds and just going, you know, and, uh, I think that's that's what jumping is you know it's it's there's something so poetic about it you know and it's not romanticizing you know death or romanticizing life either it's just it is so raw that it's that there's a certain beauty in it mm -hmm. how do you feel <laughs> watching that watching yourself uh, watching the the foot the footage floating yeah. um the hard part was watching the footage of when I crashed, you know, because I, I was trying to really see if I really did something wrong. And obviously there were some determining factors that made that happen, but as far as the execution, there's nothing really I could do, you know? So that actually kind of took some weight off my shoulders. So now I could just focus on how to make this right. But I technically, as far as the execution went, I, I didn't really have to, you know, beat myself for it, you know, but uh, bad things happen. Right. But yeah, when I, watched everything that happened I kind of yeah uh I was pleased that I think it was knocked out for a lot of it because uh it was it was already traumatic not even fully remembering everything when I woke up in the hospital he wasn't you don't come peacefully out of a coma you know I stood up upright and started screaming and like fighting because I think my mind was still in the wow. fighting state hitting the cliff you know and I was trying to get out of it and so there wasn't really a moment of, of serenity so I think being in a coma uh, helped um, subdue a little bit that that the effect of the trauma for sure. So. For sure. And we, we get to see a scene where you're in the hospital bed. Um, that, that was pretty raw. <laughs> it was. I got out of the coma and cameras are rolling and I'm like, all right, here we go. You know, so just that's not like, all right, fire away the questions. Let's go. And I think that's that was the goal with this movie is to give uh, perhaps it's unapologetic but to give a very honest and raw uh testimonial of what it's like and i think chase did a great job putting all these images together because it's uh, it's it's my goal was never to lie and just be like you know this almost superhero like which is funny because the name is super frenchy but there's there's almost a facetious things to it you know it's a nickname that was given to me when i was in college and, and it was kind of like the and then stuck around so it's kind of like this this difference between how people perceive you, but what the reality actually is. And I think the goal of this movie was to humanize it because a lot of the time you look at extreme athletes, even though it's not necessarily a, a terminology I enjoy, people either, they use two things to uh, characterize it. They say, oh, he's either crazy or he's a professional. But by putting those two things, instantly they put a, a divider between them and you. But there, the goal was to take down that wall and to be like, no, we are the same. I just chose this mean of expression. You might choose another one but we're still struggling with the same um, existential dilemmas, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, guys. My time is up. Um, I do want to say for both, I mean, Matias, in, your, in the documentary, you mentioned you look to inspire human for human adventure. Yeah. Hey, the documentary definitely does it. I'm now, so glad. Awesome. Yeah, mission, mission accomplished. accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> now I need to go get on a mountain. I usually, I used to hike. Um, some peaks here in California, but I kind of stopped. But you know what? Maybe it's time to get back to it. Yeah, pick yeah, up get your out shoes there and go up sure. and Make it happen. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Congratulations. And people are going to enjoy it just as much as I did. Yeah, thank you Thanks. for your time. Appreciate that. Cheers. Bye-bye.